Hey everybody, you've landed on a tutorial about Tableau server projects. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to dive into how you can use the Tableau server REST API to generate these projects using code. So you can create projects up here in the user interface, um, but if you wanted to create hundreds of projects or um, even just automate the process of creating projects for different purposes, maybe you have temporary projects on your sites and then need to get rid of them after some time, well the REST API is a good way for you to be able to automate that. So taking a look at the REST API reference, uh, all of these endpoints that we see here for projects are what we're going to lean on. So we're going to, we're going to create a project, uh, we're also going to query projects, pull some information about the existing projects, and then we're going to delete projects. We're not really going to mess with updating projects, but if you wanted to update a project, um, you could do that using this endpoint as well. So, take a quick look over here at the create a project endpoint just to give you an idea of what we're working with here. So, we are going to be passing some information um, as dictated by this documentation. So, we are going to need a project name, um, optionally a project description. You can see it's kind of nice here. They tag various things that are optional. Uh, maybe you want a nested project. You can pass in a parent project ID and you can specify permissions. So by default, uh, projects are managed by owner. So you just set, uh, it's kind of the wild west of permissions. I recommend when possible just to go with the locked to project. Um, now this is completely subjective, you know, there's a reason why there are all these various options available to you, but uh, I've found the most useful ones to be locked to project or locked to project without nested, uh, where this is just uh, the same as locked to project, where permissions just permeate through the entire project, depending on how you um, set them. At the, at the project level. So like, uh, you know, you're not just gonna have one workbook uh, where some group of people can view it and then another workbook where only a, a different, completely different group can view it. If you're locking content to the project, then you're kind of committing to this uh, content management approach where only people who have access to uh, the same stuff will be assigned to any given project. I think that just simplifies things uh, it kind of promotes the, uh, the idea of adding users to groups and adding groups permissions to projects um, and then just adding users to those groups or removing them from those groups as needed. So anyways, get off my soapbox there about permissions. Uh, but if you do want to read a little bit more about the consequence of how you assign permissions, this is also in the documentation. So uh, go ahead and take a stab at that if it interests you. And for this tutorial, let's go ahead and hop into some code. So if this at the top uh, is new to you, then I recommend checking out the Getting Started tutorial video, which is linked in the description of this one. And what we're doing here is we're importing Tableau server connection from the Tableau API lib, and we're importing some useful functionality that we'll use here in this tutorial. Um, both to query, easily query data and get that data into Pandas data frame and also flatten nested columns within uh, some of the data that's returned to us. So we'll see what that looks like shortly. I'm defining my configuration details and now we can actually get to establishing our connection. So I establish my connection and I sign in and the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the projects which exist on the site now. So uh, we can do this using this querying uh, functionality in the Tableau API lib library and there's this function called get projects data frame which is going to return us a pandas data frame that holds all of the uh, data from our projects. Now Inside of this, we can see what the permissions are set to. So by default, everything's managed by owner. We can see when the, project, when the projects were created or updated. 
you could also see if the project is nested, there would be a parent project ID value. Um, so here we can also see that this is top level project, that's true. All right, so there are some situations where you want to get this nested information, like this owner full name, uh, sometimes there are email addresses in there, or uh, the contents counts. Over here, it looks like we could get to uh, the project counts. Um, we could look at, so that's going to tell us how many projects exist within this project. So maybe it's a you know, hierarchy of projects. You've got a bunch of nested ones. You would see this as a non-zero value if this uh, project was the parent of a hierarchy that had child projects, so to speak. And we can also get a count of various content types. So workbooks, views, probably data sources, so let's take a look at how we can unpack that data. So I'm going to just define the column from the owner um, nested information that I want. So if we scroll back up here really quickly, you can see that full name is one of these um, data points that's available to me about the owner. So I'm going to grab the full name and then I'm also going to grab some various columns from the, uh, the uh, content counts. So let's run this, see what this looks like. I'm using this function called flatten dict column. And what that's going to do is basically take that nested information and flatten it out for us. What that means is if I scroll over here, we can find this data now as its own column. So that's what we mean by flatten. Uh, we did have a single column that had nested kind of uh, key value pairs. And we took those key value pairs and just kind of pivoted them onto this data frame. So now we can easily access uh, all of this information, including the owner full name. So everything from here to the right, we just extracted. All right, moving right along. That was kind of a sidetrack thing, just to show you how you can get some useful information about your projects. And now getting to the actual uh, main course here. How do we create projects on Tableau Server using the REST API? Well, let's define um, all of the optional bells and whistles that we kind of have available to us. So any, whenever you make a project, you will need a project name. Um, optionally, you can provide a description. So in this case, I've done that here. And you can look at uh, the various permissions available to you out here, and you can choose one of these and pass that in. If you don't pass in a uh, permission explicitly, then it's just going to default to the managed by owner setting. Um, or if you're creating child projects, it will, uh, like let's say I, I have this locked to project. If I make child projects from this one, it's going to inherit that locked property. So um, if you did want child projects to have different permissions than the parent, then you would want to keep in mind that there is this locked to project without nested. So that's going to be your salvation there, where um, the parent could be locked to the project, but the children projects are not necessarily locked. All right, I'm also defining this optional uh, URL parameter, which is publishing samples. And I just sprinkled this in here because in the documentation for this endpoint, we can see that if you append this, uh, this text where you say publish samples equals, um, you, know, you can put true here if you, want your, um, if you want samples to be published. That's all this is doing is we're passing in a parameter dict that just has key value pairs. And the keys don't really matter here so much. This, about, this isn't going to be used at all except that it's just pointing to uh, this value that we're going to append to the endpoint. When we make that request to, uh, to create this project, the server is going to see that we want to publish samples as well. So let's see what this looks like. Um, make sure I ran all this code. And we're going to create that project. And it's taking a little bit here because it's publishing up those samples. And we can take a look at the response. Uh, this is giving us information about the project that we just created. And part of that project is its ID value. 
So we're going to go ahead and store that so that we can turn around and use this project um, ID to create a new project and assign that project to be a child of this one. But first, let's take a look out at Tableau Online and we can see here, if I refresh, we should have a new project. And sure enough, here it is, beer and wine. Let's click on that and we're going to see that I have some samples published. So let's see what this looks like in a less complex situation where we don't want to use all the bells and whistles. We just want to add a project and uh, this one's not going to have the optional description. It's not going to explicitly set project permissions. So let's just see how this turns out. Uh, one thing that this is doing that, that our first project didn't have is we're defining a parent project ID. And so if you do that, um, Tableau is just going to look for that parent project. And instead of just creating this project uh, inside your kind of root directory of projects, it's going to create this project as a nested project within the parent. So seeing is believing. Let's check out what this looks like. So we just created that project. If we go out here, we should be able to refresh and see a new project existing within this one. And sure enough, here we have specialty beers inside of our beloved beer and wine project. And we can see that there's no um, sample content in here because this time when we created the project, we did not pass in that optional uh, parameter dict that had the URL parameter to, uh, that specifies to publish those samples. So now that we've done that, uh, let's clean up after ourselves. And if we want to, we could go through and delete the child project first and then the parent project. But if you delete the parent project, you will delete all the child projects um, contained within it. So I'll just delete that. And we can verify that this successful here with that 204 response code and then if we take a peek out here and we look at our projects again there is no more uh, beer and wine project and because there's no more beer and wine project there's no more specialty beers so um, that's awesome that you can do that but a little word of caution there uh, if, if you're in the UI and you try to delete a project, you might get some kind of warning indication like, hey, are you sure you want to delete this project? Um, there's none of that when you're using the REST API. So be careful here if you're testing things out and you're looping through things and you're deleting projects, updating things. Just be aware that um, the REST API, uh, some of those training wheels are going to come off. So it's really nice if you have a test environment. And so kind of a good moment here to just at the, at the end of this video shamelessly plug that Tableau uh, the Tableau developer program if you join that you can get access to a free Tableau online site like what I'm using here in these tutorial videos so don't burn down your production environment just play around in a safe sandbox like this and everything will be good so thanks for tuning in for this video and I uh, hope to catch you next time.